Hi, my name is Ted O'Connell, one of the authors of USMLE Step 3 Secrets. This is the third case video uh, from the CCS cases from our book, USMLE Step 3 Secrets. Please take a look at medicalschoolvideos.com for additional videos and like us on Facebook. Let's get started with this case. History of the present illness. A 29-year-old female presents to the emergency department for epigastric abdominal pain that radiates to the back. It was gradual in onset, but has been constant and severe for eight hours. She has had nausea and vomiting, but denies fevers or diarrhea. Vital signs, the temperature is 37.2 degrees Celsius, pulse 105, blood pressure 135 over 85, respiratory rate 16. Additional history, the patient has no significant past medical history. She denies tobacco, alcohol, or drug use. What is the differential diagnosis in this case? The differential diagnosis includes peptic ulcer disease, cholecystitis, pancreatitis, esophageal spasm, and abdominal aortic aneurysm, or AAA. What components of the physical exam do you perform? General appearance, H-E-E-N-T, cardiovascular, lungs, abdomen, and rectal examination. Physical exam findings, general, moderate distress due to pain, and the mucous membranes are dry. H-E-E-N-T, within normal limits, cardiovascular reveals a mild tachycardia, lungs are within normal limits, abdomen reveals tenderness to palpation in the epigastrium without rebound or guarding, rectal within normal limits. What are your initial orders? Initial orders should include pulse oximetry, cardiac and blood pressure monitoring, CBC, CHEM-14, lipase, urinalysis, urine pregnancy test, morphine, ondansetron, IV normal saline, and NPO status. Advance the clock. Test results come back revealing a lipase level of 1,129. All other labs are within normal limits. The patient's pain is moderately improved. What are your follow-up actions? Follow-up actions should include abdominal ultrasound, a fasting lipid panel, which reveals extremely elevated triglyceride levels, an LDH, lactate, and CT of the abdomen and pelvis with contrast. The patient should be admitted to the ward, be given gemfibrozil orally, and in the morning have a CBC and CHEM-14 ordered. The diet should be advanced as tolerated and the patient should be provided counseling. Upon discharge, follow-up should be scheduled in approximately one week and the patient should be provided counseling at that visit. Advance the clock and the case ends. What are the critical actions in this case? Critical actions include abdominal exam, a lipase level, fasting lipid panel, abdominal ultrasound, and IV fluids. Now let's have a discussion about this case. This patient has epigastric abdominal pain radiating to the back. A focused physical exam and laboratory assessment for intra-abdominal pathology reveals a lipase that is diagnostic of pancreatitis, that is three times the upper limit of normal. All patients with pancreatitis should receive IV fluids, pain control, and antiemetics. They should initially be NPO, though early feeding, when tolerated, is increasingly found to be safe. Glucose and electrolytes, especially the calcium level, should be closely monitored. A diagnosis of pancreatitis should trigger an evaluation for a source. In the United States, gallstones, alcohol, medications, and triglycerides are the most common identifiable source. Alcohol and medications can be ruled out by history. Gallstones should be evaluated with an ultrasound, and triglycerides can be identified with a lipid panel. As triglycerides climb above 500, there is a progressive risk of pancreatitis. Gemfibrozil is the agent of choice in this situation as it effectively lowers triglycerides. In this case, an LDH was ordered to calculate a Ranson score for prognosis. A CT scan is not always necessary, but can be used in cases of diagnostic uncertainty, suspected complications, or lack of clinical improvement. 
Patients may be safely discharged home when the pain is controlled, vital signs and electrolytes are normalized, and they are tolerating a diet. Patients with gallstone pancreatitis should have cholecystectomy with common bile duct exploration during the same hospitalization if they are surgical candidates. Patients with necrotizing pancreatitis are often treated with prophylactic antibiotics to prevent superinfection. That's the end of case uh, three from the CCS cases of USMLE Step 3 Secrets. We hope you'll join us for some of our other videos. Thank you.